Well, hello. Hi, I'm Corey. Um, so sorry to miss today. I had a change in dates for a family commitment based on someone's uh, change in their COVID vaccine uh, schedule. Yeah, so that's a good thing that they're getting vaccine, vaccinated, but it messed up my plans. So I look forward to seeing you all in person on screen next time. So first, I'll start with a little bit about me and why I'm talking to you. I am currently a full-time employee at Brightside Bookshop. Prior to that, I worked part-time for four years uh, because I love books and I was really excited about the opportunity to work in a bookstore. I primarily do book buying and inventory management, so kind of keeping our stock fresh for you all to come in and see us. And I do spend a little time on the floor interacting with customers and tempting them with some of our great books. Prior to that, I actually worked in higher education for about 20 years. Sadly, I lost my job last May uh, at the start of the pandemic when NAU chose not to renew my contract. However, I chose to make lemonade out of those lemons and I am truly, really excited to be here working at the bookstore. It's been a great learning experience and um, I certainly miss working with working with and mentoring students, but I get to be around books all day, which is a pretty good um, second option. So with that, uh, one good thing to know about me is that I feel like I have been a lifelong reader and learner. My mom likes to tell the story that I taught myself to read at about the age of three, and I um, really never stopped. <laughs> um, I have facilitated and been a member of a variety of book clubs and fun fact is I was thinking about all the different types of book clubs that I've been part of. I realized I think the first book club I ever joined was as an after school program when I was in third grade. So I've been a total book nerd for as long as you can imagine. I'm really excited about the Lived Black Experience uh, book club that has been started by the Southside Community Association. And I think it's really important and I'm really thankful that I've been given this opportunity to be part of it. And that they reached out to Brightside to see if we would partner with them. And it does seem like a really natural partnership. And then I recently read this quote and I was like, absolutely, this does it perfectly. So I'm just going to share that quote with you. It's by Adam Stern. He's a bookseller at the Seminary Co-op in Chicago, Illinois. And he wrote this in an uh, op-ed piece that was published in the Chicago Tribune. He said, the twin pillars of independent bookstores are browsing and community. Bookstores are places that nurture learning and discussion, champion diverse voices and ideas, celebrate language, treasure knowledge, and connect the past with our chaotic present to show us how we might go forward and are more needed than ever. We must do everything we can to support them now before it's too late because they are hubs of building what Martin Luther King Jr. called the beloved community centered on justice, equality, and love. So I was invited to share with you why I think book clubs are important um, and more particularly in connection to the, the focus of this particular book club. So the other thing to know about me is that as an undergraduate, I was a history major. So I'm always kind of a bit of a little informal historian. And my personal belief is, is that history is happening as we speak. We are living it every single day of our lives. Um, we're certainly past, but it's also our present. It may not be documented as a histor his history, but Let's be real, in today's world, it is being documented somewhere online. It may not seem significant right now. We can't always tell what is making history. <laughs> uh, historical events, whether they are recent or in the long ago past, can also, I think, feel really intangible. Statistics, news stories, things like that, they're easy to dismiss and say, not our community not our story, not our problem, not part of our history. But that's just wrong. It is. And to me, that is the beauty of reading in books. Historians, 
they're really great at creating an account that addresses those classic questions we were all taught. Who, what, when, where, why, how, and the greatest of storytellers uh, are really good at bringing those to life even in a nonfiction historical account. But personally, I will also say that I've been often more drawn to fiction because it often centers people in the midst of an experience or a date, a moment in time. And their thoughts are what bring, and their experience are what brings it to life for me. It gives me additional context. It helps me understand what it might have been like to be in that experience instead of just a distant date and moment to memorize and know. So that is where I think that can be really important with reading. And then, as I can think about book clubs and why I'm always drawn to them, why they've been a big part of my life, especially my adult life, I have found that discussing with others is what really enriches the reading experience for me. It never ceases to amaze me how each of us can read the exact same thing and have such a different reading experience. We notice different bits, we react differently to what we read, we ask different questions of what we read, and through those differences, I learn so much. My opinions, they broaden, they shift, they change. I understand differently what I read and why I saw things the way I did. And then I also have this sense of kinship through this common experience of reading the same thing and talking about it, deconstructing it, trying to understand it better. We recently had a virtual professional conference, like probably every single conference this year, and we were very lucky that uh, Barack Obama recorded a keynote uh, speech for us. <laughs> Don't know why that word was hard. And he had the most simple but yet compelling thing to say that, again, said things perfectly for me, so of course I wrote it down to share with you instead of trying to recreate it in my own words. He said, you aren't selling books. You are selling knowledge, discovery, wisdom, empathy, access to thoughts and worlds that readers have never experienced before. And by virtue of them experiencing the lives of others through books, they start understanding themselves better. The only thing I would change with that is that it may be an experience that you've had before, but it's someone else's experience. But I really thought that was compelling, and I agree. Again, this is why I'm drawn to books. This is why I'm drawn to book clubs. And the purpose, as I understand it, for these monthly book discussions is to explore the lived black experience in conjunction with the Black Lives Matter movement. And the book list that's been selected to do this is stellar. I'm so excited for you to see it and you to get to experience and read it and discuss it. And I hope that through this, we are able to seek understanding and knowledge around the lenses in which each of us and each other see and navigate the world, particularly within the confines created by institutionalized racism that is shaped by both our history and our current events. And with that, I hope that we look for commonalities, we look for differences, in our own lived experiences and in what we read about. And then the question becomes, what do we do with that information? We can start asking questions, we can start seeking answers, we can start moving towards change. And some of the questions I think about, and I say these as a white woman with privilege that I sometimes forget to acknowledge and appreciate, what privileges do I have? What am I lacking? How is that different or the same from other people? What conscious and subconscious biases do I have? How do they affect my interactions with others? And what are we gonna do about it? I also think it's important we ask, how are we gonna lift each other up through sometimes hard and painful conversations? How do we appropriately challenge each other, ourselves? And how do we celebrate our lived experiences together. So that's all I have to say. I really look forward to seeing you all in the future and having rich, 
thoughtful discussions with each other. And um, I'm going to hand off now that you've had plenty of time with me. Thank you.